seems unusual to raise this much financing so close to a planned IPO. What's the strategy here? Yeah, look, we, we weren't intending to raise additional capital, but we found a great opportunity with uh, investors who share our vision for the future of video, the future of Vimeo, uh, have a long-term view and at attractive terms. And look, we think the market's big. We have lots of opportunities to invest in growth. And so we just decided to take advantage now, um, as well as ultimately in the future, uh, to have an opportunity to take advantage of public markets. Now, Angela, you've really pivoted this company to focus not on consumers, but on the enterprise. What are you going to be doing with this financing? How are you going to be investing in growth? Look, we're very focused on empowering every business of every size to use video. Uh, to communicate with their customers externally, to communicate with their teams internally. And so we're going to be investing in product, R&D, and innovation. We'll be expanding our teams, sales and marketing, looking for other opportunities. Uh, but really, we see this market as over $70 billion in the next few years. Every professional, every team, every organization using video. Um, and we think we can build a solution that really lowers the barriers for many more people to unlock it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the, the big unknown is, uh, is the degree to which we see some kind of deceleration in video hosting sharing uh, services. But um, at this point, it's, it's hard to find anybody who thinks that we're going to completely undo the crazy effects of the past year. Yeah, look, I think, uh, I think we've all witnessed the uh, need for video over the last year. And there's no question that the pandemic has accelerated the demand. But it's demand we always expected to see. And listen, like I, I see companies using us to train their store associates around the world or their customer support reps or their sales team. That's not going to go away. I see fitness studios and gyms who are now going from reaching hundreds of customers to hundreds of thousands by live streaming their classes. And we expect they'll go to a hybrid approach when the world returns. And, you know, all these small businesses out there, they'll always have websites and social media accounts, and they're going to need to engage with their customers on those platforms. And video is just a, a great medium, and it performs better than image and text. So, yeah, I, I don't, we don't obviously believe in, in video. We think the pandemic has accelerated the demand, but has no, by no means changed the market opportunity that we have been building towards for the last few years. Hi, Anjali. Uh, good morning. It's John Fort. I, I wonder how deep into business video are you going to go strategically? Because during this pandemic period, I've seen so many companies cobbling together video solutions with Vimeo as a part of it. You know, hop in for an event platform with Vimeo connected. Hop in just brought, bought StreamYard, I think, for about a quarter billion dollars, kind of trying to fill out th this idea of getting multiple people talking on a platform. Vimeo arguably has an opportunity to sort of vertically integrate some of these disparate video solutions out there. Is that part of your vision or no? Yeah, look, we've always uh, approached the market believing that companies need an all-in-one video solution across their needs, across departments and all the different ways they use video. And if you actually look at the breadth of Vimeo's solution today, it is the broadest in the market. We acquired a company called Livestream in 2017 that uh, was a leader in professional live streaming. And we use that technology today to power everything from town halls and conferences, um, all in TV quality. So do I think that in the long term, uh, customers at, and businesses will demand uh, one simple single solution? Absolutely. Do I think Vimeo is well positioned with a, a good head start? in having the breadth of the product suite, absolutely. Um, and so certainly expect additional competition in the future. But again, I think we're well positioned with the product, with the intellectual property and innovation, and now with the capital um, to go after that. Anjali, uh, Anjali, tell us about how you're working with companies such as Shopify and GoDaddy to have your tools embedded in there. Do you think that's going to end up driving more customer acquisition uh, in the next couple of quarters? Yes, we, you know, we have sort of approached partnerships with the view that every business needs to use video and we just need to make it easier for them. And one way to make it easier for them is to give them access to the power of Vimeo on other platforms, wherever they are. And so we have partnered with uh, platforms like Shopify, 
like GoDaddy, like others, and we will be announcing additional partnerships soon. And the idea is that we will look to natively integrate parts of our offering um, into these platforms where businesses are operating um, and then have a relationship where they will join Vimeo to access more advanced tools. Uh, and we do think that can be um, a viable uh, and scalable customer acquisition strategy. And, and more importantly, it just opens up the market by making video more accessible to all of these different businesses. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.